Molly at the at the beginning of August last year in NTU's graduate hall to the place we live in. And um this is the place. And um, it's about three o'clock in the morning and everyone at that time everyone was morning yesterday. Someone may drink late late. But uh, all of a sudden an uh, ear piercing stop broke uh, so quiet, repeating the same sentence again and again and again. Let's hear it. Stand by me the speakers of further announcement. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention. Um, and stand by me the speakers of further announcement. Now so much the 
students rush downstairs. They're just standing on the passenger swing, waiting for the investigation result. And the things will turn off as, uh, as nothing happened to Chen also. So, and several weeks later, this time it's indefinite. The fire alarm was again activated. This time, just a few people get upset, and uh, some of them just uh, come on. It's another false alarm. So nothing, nothing else. Don't worry. Uh. And about uh, the, the story was that about uh, last month, this time was about uh, six o'clock in the morning. Once again, it announcing the fire alarm has been activated. Uh, please remain calm and stand nearby. Uh, nearby speakers for further announcement. So this time, for, for, for myself, uh, to be frank, I have already got tired of this kind of situation. But for the sake of safety, I still went out of my room and say what happened. But the great difference is that this time, no one was outside. No one was outside. Oh, I just see, I just saw one girl outside, but. When she saw no one was outside, she said, What a of all that water okay. <laughs> that came back. Sleep again. Okay, so uh, and then the result was nothing happened as a child again. So till now I think um, we have already got used to this and even get tired of this kind of false alarm. And then even and then the further announcement, the further uh, the, the in the future, the fair alarm will not us. We will not be alerted. So even even when the real fear, the real, the real danger was happening to us. So that reminds me of a very uh, popular story, the office coming, which is very very familiar to all of us. The shepherd boy who is uh, repeatedly tricked the nearby villagers into thinking that uh, oh, the wolf was going to attack my my flock. To help him, but uh, but after being tricked again and again and again, the villagers will not uh, believe, the, will not trust in the boy anymore. And when the the real dangers come, yeah, uh, but uh, when the real dangers came, came the boy was eaten by the wolf together with his flock. But but this kind of situation really happened in Chinese history. Okay, let's go back to. China's history. It about uh, thousands of uh, years ago, and uh, the last ruler of uh, the last ruler of uh, Zhou Dynasty, we can call him King Yu. He had a very very beautiful concubine. We can call her Bao Su. Yes, he loved her so much that he even replaced uh, his original queen with her. But one thing is that uh, King. The boss, we can say it's very, she's very, very beautiful. But the one thing is that she never smelled. So we can, so it, he, she, she is just the so called iceberg, iceberg beauty. Okay? So that displays the, the king. She tried every effort to please his loved queen. But uh, in vain. So later, she, he, the, the, the king came out with uh, came up with an idea. You know, in ancient China, the the, the uh, there's uh, no modern communication tools or instant message like today. So when the dangerous is coming, when the enemy was about to attack the capital city, what we will do? The king will order will let uh, his soldier to make fear on um, maybe on the tower or on the hill. So. The, when the fair was made, uh, the governors in different places will see the fair from a distance. So they will hurry come to the palace, into the capital city to defense. So to please the boss, the queen, uh, the king came up with the idea that she, she order, he ordered his soldier to make fair on the tower. So. Actually, the governors think how oh, something must be must happen seriously, so they hurried uh, to run into the palace, the king's palace. But uh, when they come to the palace, the, 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 the king told them that, come on, nothing happened. I just uh, made this trick to please my 
loved the queen. And of course, the, 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 the governors are very, very, very angry, but they, can, they could not come again anymore. Mm. So, but, you know what? This very, very silly trick really pleased the queen. She definitely is there. Okay, but years later, this time, the real enemy came to contact. So, as you were the king of Marwara, he ordered his soldier to make fire on the tower. But do you think the gunners will come this time? No. If you think this is just a silly trick, I won't be tricked again and again. I'm not a silly guy, okay? But the end of the story is that uh, the king was killed by an enemy and, uh, and his country, the, the Zhou dynasty, was over in China's history. Okay. So, let me, when, I think when our, uh, these two stories, the local stories and the key stories, all ended with a, with a tragedy ending. And uh, when, I think when our parents, our teacher told us these two tales when we were kids, what did they want to tell us it? Is that they want to, uh, they want us to say how the lives are rewarded. They never tell us because once they tell us, no one will believe it anymore. Even the time you tell the truth. So I think these are more stories. But this time, let's uh, let's uh, review this story, the two stories from a new perspective, not from the shepherd boy and the king's perspective, but from the nearby villagers and the gardeners' perspective. Uh, let me as well add a, add a what if. So what if the what if the wolf is really attacking the boy, the boy and the flock this time? What if the enemy was really coming this time? What if the fair alarm is announcing a real fair this time? And what if she really needs help? Here she refers to the girl in this, in this photo. Her name is uh, Liang Yang. Um, a very beautiful girl, just uh, 35 years old. But uh, just uh, last, uh, this is the, this is the latest news, just uh, last month, at the end of uh, last month. Uh, okay, she, the background is that she, she is a manager in IBM in Shenzhen, the South City in China. And uh, one day last month, uh, on, her, on her way to go to work, she, she was fainted and uh, fell down on the stairs nearby the metro. Uh, and uh, and uh, about uh, half an hour later, when the policeman came, <coughs> unfortunately she has already passed away, just 35 years old. And uh, after her death, the, the policeman investigated the civilian's widow, uh, took him as a camera in the metro, and they found that in that uh, critical death of leave half an hour, there are about uh, seven people passed by from her, but no one ever tried to help to, to offer the first aid, or oh, no one ever tried to dare the emergency call. So, that caused them such a tragedy. We can't help asking ourselves, what's wrong? What's wrong with our society? Okay, someone you imputed this accident to another accident, and uh, the key role for this accident is uh, a woman, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Xu. It's about uh, in 2000, the year 2006. Mrs. Xu, like Liang Ying, also fainted and fell down on the street. By this time, she's not uh, as unfortunate as Liang Ying. <coughs> a very, very warm-hearted young, young man called, uh, we can call him as uh, Mr. Peng, happened to saw her lying on the street. So he took her to the hospital and uh, paid for the emergency fee first. But uh, this not go so easily. When Mrs. Mrs. Xu woke up, woke up, you know what? She scorned that. Oh, it's Mr. Peng. He hit me. So that's why I was in the hospital. That's why I got I, I got hurt. And she he even she she even accused.
appealed to the court and accused of me, accused Mr. Peng of uh, several, several uh, about, a, about a twenty thousand, twenty thousand or forty thousand compensation. And uh, the result, because there's no evidence, evidence showing that Mr. Peng is uh, innocent, so the result is that uh, Mr. Peng paid the compensation fee for Mrs. Xu. For, so this incident uh, caused a stir in Chinese society. And uh, the very controversial topic now is that, dare you to help? Do you think that uh, your, your candidate help will become a trouble by yourself? And do you think that uh, the, your candidate help, uh, the, you will help someone, but someone may be fan force with so there's a trust we can call it. I think we can call it as a as a trust crisis in our modern society. And now again, let add what if. You know this story is all ended with uh, with tragedies, tragedy endings. But what if? Okay, what if she really need help? What if this thing is real? Is real for this child? Will you will you will, will you still turn blind eye to this? So I think in uh, in today's society, uh, okay, back to these stories. I think it is surely it is wrong for the remember the stories I mentioned before. It is uh, of course wrong for the chef the ball to treat the villagers again and again. And it is silly for the king you king you to treat. The, the governor so to come to help just to win the smell of his queen. And it is unethical for Mrs. Xu to accuse of compensation from a candidate helper. But can't we learn something from ourselves? Okay, yes, please. I think uh, uh, for, for, our, for ourselves, please do not assume everything as it was, as always. And uh, please find excuse for your indifference. Please do, do not let your one times ignorance uh, become a regret for the future. And because I think there's, uh, every, there's little hope behind every hopeless, and there's little 